and welcome to Mickey Art. My name is Michelle Edhouse and today I am going to paint this little vase that I found um, in a uh, thrift shop, a second hand shop, Red Cross shop, whatever you want to call them. Um, and uh, as you can see it's got a tinting to the glass but if I'm not sure if I can capture it but there you go. Um, there is Quite a lot of staining on the inside and I'm sure if I had used acid I could probably get it off but that's not what I bought it for I bought it to paint on so um, my target with this little lovely is to see what magic I can create um, it's it's a nice little shape and I get that the paint will run quite nicely around it uh, so what I've got set up underneath is my um, Lazy Susan with a baking tray on top to hold my cardboard which is going to catch my drips then I've got a tin which fits quite nicely on the inside of that but it's a little bit wobbly um, it's better that way around yay so I'm going to leave the camera on this weird angle so that hopefully you guys get to see the whole painting process as it happens so as it spins around it is not centered and that's why it's happening like that there we go now why have i got it on the lazy susan well i found that pouring 3d objects is a lot easier on a lazy susan because you get to all sides and not have to worry about it now the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to um just give the glass a little bit of a rub with sandpaper why am i doing that hopefully it just scratches it up a bit not much doesn't need to be much but it just takes that absolute smoothness off um, you can see the difference between that and that it's just dulled it off it's just enough to give it um, a little bit of tooth a little bit to grab onto it's really not much to be really honest it probably doesn't do anything but i like to do it for my own sake to make me feel like i've achieved something and uh if any of you know something that you can apply that glues to glass dries smooth and clear that could do this job for me i'm happy that would be great so let's just get the dust off that and pop it back down on there now what colors are we going to do uh i've been playing a lot with purple lately and um the cool thing about purple is that it goes with blue it's very majestic and it also goes with silver and silver is one of my favorite colors I don't think you knew that. Probably not. So, this purple I've had mixed up. It is crimson red mixed with uh, cobalt blue and then some phthalo blue added to give it a darker. And you can see there... You can see the, the wet stuff, but just above the wet stuff you can see how dark it dries. So, it's quite deep, quite dark indeed. And I'm going to put a little bit of silicon in that, just because I like silicon. And I'm just going to put two drips of the dimethicone, which I buy in the form of Durex Play Perfect Glide. Uh, 
It is available on Amazon and I do have a link in my shop, but it's horrendously expensive. Um, it's nowhere near that expensive when I buy it from my supermarket. So if you're willing to go out of your way. <laughs> then I'm going to go with the phthalo blue. And I'm going to go with some silver. Okay. But before I start doing that, because we've got this lippy bit here, I'd like the paint to flow quite nicely through that lip without wasting a lot of paint. I've got the cardboard here so we can make cards out of um, the off run because I've never really been excited about what runs off onto a canvas, so I'm not even bothering with that. Um, but I'm going to put a base layer of paint down. And just to give it a little bit of lightness, I'm going to go with the white. <laughs> and I'm going to go with my house paint, because if you have ever tried to get house paint off windows after it's been there a while, You'll know it's a pain. So let me what angle do I need to pour at so that you guys can see? So move everything else out of the way so this baking tray can spin. don't need it to be a huge thick um, layer I'm just gonna bring that down it's just so that the paint has somewhere to run it's got something that's already run that way so that it's all covered Should be good to go yeah um just gonna pick up some of the paint that's dripped off and run it down giving it a little bit more of an even feed, even spread, less wasted paint, although it will all still drop off anyway, and make sure I've got it all. good start colors let's add some colors I probably should have wiped that down before I started with alcohol or something but I did wash it before we started so I definitely want the silver to be on top so I'm going to put some of that in last or first And I think my silver is a bit thicker. Oh, crikey. We're spinning. You spin me right round, baby, right round like a record player. There we go. Let's do that and it can spin itself to on its own. So remember, I've only got silicon in the purple. Uh, 
and I don't really know how much paint we need because I haven't measured the V's to see Oops, this blue's gone a little bit lumpy I'm not sure what's going on there but as you can see except my colours are a bit wonky too there we go um, I'm just putting lots of varies now when it comes to pouring on a three-dimensional object you've just got to know that it's going to go everywhere um, and those of you that have watched me do my cups will know that it does it goes everywhere and I'm just going to pour very slowly round and round round and round the mulberry bush the monkey chased the weasel and the reason I'm pouring very slowly is so that we get lots of lovely layers And what I'm doing here, let's spin you around, is grabbing the runoff and telling the paint where to go. Okay. So the cool thing about paint is it follows. The heaviest layer it's also one of the most annoying things about paint it follows the heaviest layer it goes down the path of least resistance which tends to be the one that's already got the paint on it okay so now we've got big lumps of paint going on there let's put another color splurge Ooh. so i'm just pouring in one place and turning the object you can see how that makes it really easy just to keep a steady flow going speed it up or slow it down the other thing you get is an even line coming out of the pot and onto the object whereas if if you go around and round and round the line kind of twists itself I do actually want the colour all the way down. The odd little bit of white is fine, but I'm just having it run all the way down. guiding the paint to run over the white so 
so that it can suck the suck the color down after it Probably leaving as little white behind as possible. And I'm not sure if you can see what I'm doing, but I am actually trying to pick up colour from the colour that's dripped off rather than from the white now. Now that I'm Okay, I think I'm liking it, so I'm actually going to leave it to drain for a little bit. One of the things I've, one of the other tricks I've found with um, doing the 3Ds like this, oh Michelle. You just screwed that right up. You know what I did? I dribbled. Did the typical two-year-old thing and dribbled. Look at that. Mickey not happy. <laughs> Mickey pissed off with herself. Excuse the language. All right, let's do another run. Right round, go on. Go. All right, I'm going to leave it at that. <laughs> That's pretty, I like that. That is pretty. So as I was saying, one of the things about doing 3D objects is before you torch it and bring up the silicon, you really do need to um, just let the majority of the movement stop. Um, and one way of telling whether the movement has stopped is by running your blade around the bottom and getting rid of the drips and then watching to see how many drips keep dripping and as you can see it's dripping quite continuously still I do have my heater on, so there's a possibility that it will bring up cells that way anyway. Got some beautiful drips in the bottom here. I will be dipping, I promise. So pretty. Okay, see, I can see a, a cell sort of vaguely forming there. 
if you do them too early your cells just disfigure and stretch out of proportion and go really and they still create an interesting effect but they don't necessarily create the end result you're after no, leave it alone Michelle okay How are we going colour wise? You're not too bad, not too bad. Maybe if I tilt you up that way, you can see my cuppa. Ah. Okay. So I'm just going to take my little butane torch. I'm not going to touch the paint with the with the flame, but I am going to warm the flame, warm the flame up and down the paint, just to warm the paint and as it warms the paint it just opens up space for the silicon that's in the purple to rise up to the top don't get too close otherwise you'll burn the paint Don't stay in one spot too much, otherwise you'll burn the paint. Alright, look at those cells. They're so pretty. You can see they're already starting to to smeary smush Oops, sorry darkened it just breaks up the large amount of burgundy purpley color that was there Let's just get rid of those drips. See if we can stop the paint from running quite so dynamically. In which case it will not distort them quite so much. Now I don't think I'm going to be able to move this in order to do my dipping. So we're just going to have to work around it. Luckily it's on the on the circly roundy thing. Uh, and I don't think by getting you down I'm actually going to get an, any better result than what you're seeing there. Um, let's zoom you in a bit. And the majority of this, what looks like white, is actually silver, which is awesome. Although there is a little pathway of white running down there, which is quite funky. So, now that we've done that, let's... Zoom in and have a look at what we've got down in here. Lots and lots of layery rings caused by the drips all being in the same place. <coughs> Excuse me. Actually, I am going to move it. I'm going to move it over to its drying spot uh, because I'm going to want to tilt the cardboard 
so that whatever I don't capture. All right, take a big deep breath. I'll be right back. Whew, it worked. And the other thing that that is doing is giving the paint somewhere to spread so it doesn't run off the edge here. I don't want to lose it. It's so pretty. Give it somewhere to run. Break up that surface tension. Look at that. That's so pretty. Brighten it up a bit though, because it's now it's gone and blurred out on me. Ugh. Sometimes it's not easy to get these cameras to do what you want them to do, is it? Okay, so, cabochons. Am I hearing cabochons? Requests for cabochons? We can definitely do cabochons. All right. Anyone would think we're live. But we're not. We're not. We're not live. Ah, uh, cabochons. What colors? What? what? Oh, this is so pretty. I don't... I don't know if I want a cabochon or I don't know. Dip, 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 dip. Hmm. What could we choose here, darling? I wish you guys were here and you could point at things. Get that bit, Michelle, get that bit. <laughs> I'm just going to have to tap into your energy and perceive what you're trying to tell me. Okay. I've got a little teardrop. Well, it's not that little. A teardrop. Just kiss it. Kiss it so it covers the glass. Sometimes what I do is I ask the painting and the cabochon to tell me where to go and then look at the painting, the paint, and the bit that I can see is the bit that wants to be. Who's next? Who's coming to play?
Love hearts. Now, I'm not sure whether that was dipped in there in order to create something in the paint or on the cabochon. So let's have a look at the cabochon. Hmm. It's alright. It's not great. I think it was there to get rid of that line and sort of make a mush. Smushy mushy. You know what? That's all the cabochons I'm going to do because... What I'm going to do now is just tilt the paint. And just take it and let it spread. Cover the whole cardboard. Become like a piece of stone out of a out of the earth now for those of you wondering what I'm doing this for I actually take the the cardboard once it's dry and cut them up and make cards greeting cards out of them let's see if we get any silicon cells come up Now, this torching isn't just for silicon cells, it also pops air bubbles, which is really handy because then you don't end up with weird white patches. Oh, I like that. I think I might be taking some photos for use to make. Um... images from because that's super pretty Pretty, it's so pretty, it's so pretty and nice. Okay, done. Stop tattooing, Michelle. I am going to get you down and show you this from, from up high. Let's get you down. Let's see if we can get it to stop moving. So, ah, no, wrong button.
stickers looking rather out of focus. What do you think? got to remember that there's a lot of silver in here so I'm excited to see how this dries. So this time I will actually remember to show you the dry result of this as well um, when it gets to the end of the video. So guys stay tuned I'll be back um, to show you the dry result in three two one hello and welcome forward it's dry they're dry everything's dry yay well i say that this cardboard's still quite <laughs> damp-ish in the background but that's totally fine i don't mind um look it shimmers dude it's shimmery oh by the way i do have a warm light in one of my lights and that's what makes it look like there's gold there's not i confused someone the other day it's not man i'm not man not actualizing gold in my work without putting it there in the first place so how did our um v's come out it is quite dark partly that was expected but that's all silver. Check it out. It shimmers. And it will shimmer even more once it's sealed. It's quite motley, but then it's 3D. You get that, guys. Please don't expect to have perfectly round cells in a 3D object. It doesn't happen. If you're going to do 3D, you've got to love funny shaped cells that's weird that whole area is really weird huh but I like it I do it's fun it's funky and it's Mickey art so how did the cabochons come out? Let me show you if that will stay up by itself. Here's the first one. Um, and that's, if you remember, that's the one that I dipped out of the center of the dripping. Uh, oh. There we go, that's better. Do you like it? It almost looks like a tree. A blue tree on a cloudy day. <laughs> Next we've got the teardrop. That's kind of funky too. Look at that. It's got the silver in the background but then it's got like white swipey bits at the front looks very 3d it's quite funky indeed and last but not least our square one i like that which way around would you hang it oh that looks like a bird can you see it it's a little blue bird has its tail down, running down its back and down to its tail, coming around to its tummy, and it's got its little beak there. Can you see it? Huh? There we go. I like it. So, guys, I had fun. I hope you did. Wow, what happened there? Don't do that. Zoom out, not go blinding. I hope you had fun. Thank you for joining me. As always, um, if any of these pop out at you and go, oh, I want to live at your house, um, just touch base with me. 
through my contact page on my website makiart.co.nz and um, let me know make me an offer I'm not very good at pricing my work you should have seen me <laughs> trying to price my work for my exhibition <sighs> and if you want to come join me on my next go live then also jump on my website but put forward slash sign up and sign up for the newsletter literally the only thing you ever get is hey i'm going live tomorrow uh so you get a 24 hour heads up and uh what else is possible how much more fun can we have and to all those of you that joined me on the live stream for my exhibition opening thank you thank you been uh, really enjoyed that and um how much fun can we have now i adore you all bye bye